My role is to oversee all our work with communities at our project sites in Australia, our wind farm sites. We've got um, two operating wind farms in Australia. This is the Warbur Wind Farm here in Victoria and a site at Gunning in New South Wales. I lived in the area at Warbur itself. I was actually born on the uh, Lexton side of Warbur uh, about 51 years ago and uh, lived there till I was in my mid-twenties till I got married and then moved down to Burren Beach which is just south of Warbur. Uh, we bought the store almost eight years ago now in 2004 so time's gone pretty quickly. My husband and family had come down from Cairns in North Queensland so definitely new to the area. Warbur Wind Farm's got 128 turbines, they're 1.5 megawatts each, so there's a total generating capacity of 192 megawatts, which is enough in theory to power uh, around 80,000 houses. Uh, there are 37 landholders involved in this project, so we've got infrastructure located on 37 properties here. There are five what are called substations, so the turbines all feed their electricity back into a substation, and then there's a main terminal station where those five substations all come together. I always thought that they were a, another alternative way of producing electricity. Didn't have any real firm thoughts any other way. Uh, it started off as $7,000 a turbine. As an income in farming, Everything is sort of, you sow crops and you run animals and then you hope that the commodity prices are reasonable at the end and the amount you get back off them are uh, adequate, which is getting harder and harder. So with the wind towers, at least at the end of the year, we know we're getting paid so much per turbine and it's guaranteed income. Probably if you look at a wind tower as being like a windmill, your windmill's there for pumping water out of the ground and a wind tower is probably there, but another 10 or 15 times taller. Uh, animals don't seem to worry about them, they just w wander around them. They actually, some of the paddocks that have got less shade on them there on a sunny day, you will actually see them congo line along where the shadow is behind them and get shelter off them. I think, I think definitely, I, I don't know whether I'm a climate change believer or not, but I certainly believe in renewable energy. Obviously during the period of construction we had, uh, there was literally hundreds of extra people in the town. And we got a lot of extra business from that. Obviously that's come to an end, but we still get fairly regular trade. They don't come in every day, but we certainly get at least some people from, from Axiona in every day. At least a couple of times a week, I'll have someone come into the shop and say, look, where's the best place to go to see the wind turbines? I'd like to get up close and have a look. It's probably made me more interested in renewable energy. And if I'm looking at books or magazines and there's something about wind turbines or alternative types of uh, energy production, I do have a little bit of a look at that, um, those articles and have a little bit of interest in that. Yeah, so there are a team of about 28 people who work here full time at the wind farm. The majority of those are what we call turbine technicians, there's 26 of those. About 80% of that workforce was drawn from the local area, so Ballarat and surrounds. The, uh, the wind farm project has had a long lead time prior to construction. There's an extensive sort of planning and development process that happens. We've had a community reference group which has been running for well over three years now that comprises local members of the community who meet a couple of times a year to get an update on the project, to raise issues about the project, um, to get feedback and, and have some discussions. They put in $500 per turbine which works out to be $64,000 into a community fund that goes back into putting a lot of stuff into the community because they are up there now for the long haul and uh, yeah, they're looking to be there and just help if they can. The football club is one of the ones they sponsor. Yeah, I think a lot of people from your neighbouring clubs think that the uh, football club is totally paid for by Exiana, but that's a sort of an urban myth, and especially seeing we won three flags last year in the seniors, under 18s and uh, reserves. Axiana, whenever they do build a wind farm, give the community a chance to have a day of some sorts or a festival. The last year, during the festival, um, we had buses running all day. We took about 600 people who were at the festival on a bus, brought them up to the wind farm, took them up to a turbine so they could see what the wind farm was all about. There is a high level of support for the Warbur wind farm in the local community. Um, we've done some survey work in previous years which showed you know, in the order of 60 or 65% of people were supportive of the project. 
we do understand some people have concerns and, that, and, that's, and that's okay. We, we try and work through those issues with people when we can. A bit like anything, with something new or different, I think people are a bit sort of uh, resistant to change. I realise that there, there are still some people who don't like them and that's their, that's their choice or opinion. But I think, uh, generally speaking, most people are, you know, sort of like them and uh, don't mind them at all in the community. Our company has built about 280 wind farms around the world. Um, about 150 of those are in Spain. Community opposition to wind in Spain is, is largely unknown, but in, certainly in countries like North America and Canada and in Australia, there, there is um, a reasonable level of opposition to, to wind farms. In my way of thinking there, it's a, it's a positive because it's actually helping to minimise our carbon footprint there are some people who uh, are strongly opposed to wind farms. They don't like the turbines. Some people find them beautiful, some people find them ugly. Uh, there is a lot of talk about whether they do make people crook or not. We work around them on a daily basis and uh, we're too busy in our lives to worry about them. Last year there was a Senate inquiry in Australia that looked into wind farms in Australia and the health issues were um, one of the main topics that were considered. The Senate inquiry called for further research to be undertaken in Australia, but if there were to be any issues identified, we would want to know as well. We live and work amongst the wind farms as well. Uh, we've got employees who live on site, obviously, um, and we want to ensure that the, any issues can be addressed. But our, our position is that there's no credible, peer-reviewed, scientific research that's been undertaken anywhere in the world that has identified any health issues with wind farms. We're not getting crook off them because even though we're getting money out of them, if I was getting crook, I'm only probably going to be here for another 20, 30 years, so I'd be squealing like a stuck pig if I was getting sick off them. But look, there is always people that dislike change and aren't going to be happy with whatever happens. But overall, the majority of the people are fairly happy with them.